Welcome from Indianapolis. I am Derwin Smiley, and this is the Derwin Smiley Show coming from our new home at IMS Productions. I am glad you are with me, and the show starts right now. Mr. Robert Jackson is the chairman of the Kappa League here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Mr. Jackson, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Tell me about your professional background and why did you join our wonderful, world wonderful fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi? Well, my background is uh, I'm into pharmaceuticals, but I'm also a motivational speaker and an author. Uh, I've dedicated my life to giving back to young people. Uh, joined the fraternity uh, by accident, actually. I didn't know what fraternity was when I went to college, but I went to an interest meeting with a friend of mine and uh, really enjoyed what I heard. And I looked up a couple weeks later, I was online. So, you know, that was 21 years ago almost. So, You said you're a motivational speaker? How yes, did you, sir. How did that come about? Um, that kind of came about by accident as well. I started speaking in small groups with young people, and then I started getting invited to speak at uh, more uh, venues. And then when I wrote the book, No More Excuses, Black Men Stand Up, you know, people start calling me to come out and speak, so it's expanded from there. Let's talk about the, the Kappa League. What is the Kappa League? Give me the history. Well, the Kappa League really is the part of the Guide Right program. The Guide Right program started back in 1922. But it's evolved over the years. We had to change the curriculum up a little bit to fit to uh, the new millennium kids that we have now. But it's a leadership program. We try and teach our young people to be leaders of tomorrow. We try to get them ready for their future through academic enrichment, through goal setting, um, through self-identity. And we're trying to teach these young people to become self-sufficient. But we have a series of uh, activities that we do with the young people besides the field trips. Uh, we talk about peer pressure. We talk about issues that are facing uh, them today. And also with uh, the academic enrichment piece, we're looking at grades and making sure they stay on track uh, to go to college. And not just go to college, we want them to graduate. What did you get the passion to have for just to better our youth in our community? Well, I was one of those knucklehead kids myself, so <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress, man. I had to come a long way to get to where I'm at today. Uh, anger problems uh, from growing up in poverty, uh, not knowing my father, and, and just understanding how that felt and watching the mistakes that I made. I want to make sure these young people don't make the same mistakes. So I feel like my job is to try to give them the blueprint to be successful. Tell me, what are some of the top challenges that you see our youth face today? Well, I think some of the biggest challenges is that um, some of them have given up. You know, um, when they're making bad grades in school, you're, talking, you're making straight S, but you're talking about you going to college. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, we have over 70% of our young black males that are not graduating from high school. And out of 70% not graduating, 60% are going to prison. So they're building more prisons now instead of building colleges. So I think the challenge is we need more men stepping to the plate being mentors for these young people. We don't have enough mentors. We, don't, we, have, we talk about the problem, but we don't talk about solutions to the problem. So we need some, some people to man up. So tell me some of the events that um, the Kappa Leaguers participate in. Well, we meet with them twice a month at the school, and we meet with them. They run their own meetings. They have a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Uh, they do community service projects. They do fundraisers. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to take them to the Freedom Museum uh, for an uh, um, educational enrichment piece for Black History Month um, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we have a leadership summit coming up called the Mel Davis Leadership Summit, where we're going to be doing certain activities with the uh, young people, teach them how to tie ties. Uh, we're going to be talking about peer pressure, relationships, and um, they have a formal event coming up in May where they're going to come dressed in their suits and ties and bring their girlfriends out, and we're going to teach them how to, do t you know, how to treat their woman, how to open the door, and how to pull out the chair, and you know, we're going to do some table etiquette stuff. We're going to have dinner with the young people, so it's going to be a, those are just some of the events coming up, but we have a few more coming up this summer as well. How can a parent, I remember when I was working, I shared this story with yeah. you, when I was working at Longfellow Middle School in IPS, and a parent asked me, what can I do? Is there any programs out there? And I don't, I don't know. I drew a blank because I was new to the city, but I didn't know anything out there at the time. And that has been haunting me ever since this day that I never sure. wanted to get in that situation again where I felt that I dropped the ball on that parent. So tell me, how can a parent get involved with the, the capital to put their child in this program? 
Well, hopefully the kids are in high school. It just depends on the age of the kids because the Capital League is for ninth to 12th graders. And we have active chapters at Tenley School, Pike High School, Broad Ripple. We're about to start a, uh, about to activate the chapter at Warren Central High School. So they can contact me via email, rjackson18 at hotmail.com. They can go on our Cap Alpha side website, um, and it has information about the Capital League on there as well. Give me some success stories. Uh, well, we have several. I mean, I don't know where to where to uh, where to begin. I mean, one young man that was in the Kappa League is in the Navy. He's moving up in the ranks. We have several Kappa Leaguers in college now. Um, so we're teaching these young men to be leaders of tomorrow. So our Kappa Leaguers are going on to school and they're finishing school. We had a couple of Kappa Leaguers graduate. But uh, another success story is happening is in the making right now. We have about seven of our Kappa Leaguers have been accepted to over uh, 40 universities here in the United States. I think that's very impactful when you have a young man. Um, I just met with the Timley Kappa League on Tuesday, and seven of those young men had over 40 schools have accepted them to go to college, and many of them are offering scholarships. I think that's very successful. I, I commend you. He is Mr. Robert Jackson, the chairman of the Kappa League. Mr. Jackson, welcome. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, appreciate you. But we're going to talk about some of the issues that comes with educating, uh, especially black males, minority males. We know it's a lot of problems been going on in the school system. But I always ask the question, why you become teachers for a reason? Ms. Tisa Smith is a coordinator for Vision Summer Beauty Camp. Ms. Smith, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I wanted to have you on because there's just so much that goes on yes. with this program. Yes. Could you tell me what are your responsibilities with the camp? Um, I work with the girls on assisting them in drama. I coordinated the different events that we had, um, going ranging from career day to um, domestic violence, or actually it was called um, internet safety. Yeah. Um, I also was in charge of the, um, putting together for the Zoom routine that we did at the finale. I think something that jumped, I'm going to piggyback on those okay. like four or five things okay. you threw out. The first thing is the career day. Mm -hmm. And as we was talking, you said the age group is from 10 to 16. Why is it so important for these girls to be thinking about their careers at a young age? I think it's important because um, even if you just have an idea of where, where you want to go um, nowadays, kids are learning Spanish in, at kindergarten, um, preparing. I know when, once they're in high school, they start they have preparatory college courses and they might have it before then. Um, so I think it's very important to kind of have an idea of what you might like going forward in life versus waiting until you're 18 or 19. <laughs> what are some of the careers that th some of the girls like to go into? A lot of people were interested in um, television. Um, also, we had some ladies that were interested in um, dental hygiene. So it was kind of it was kind of different, mm -hmm. but yes. The one thing that jumped out, you said television, yes. so I might have some competition. <laughs> you might, <laughs> you might, because it's also in the program. Um, we teach them acting and dance, so there's other things, so it's beauty and everything else that goes with it. I think another thing that stood out was Zumba. Yes. How important is exercising for the young girls? It's very important. Um, we're in a day and age where uh, it's easier to go to McDonald's to grab something to eat, or just anywhere, I shouldn't say that. But... Um, I think because we also have a health fair where we t personal hygiene where we talk about that and exercise is important c piggybacking onto that because like I said you don't want to get into a routine of just eating you want to actually learn how to have good healthy fun and not just sit around in the house. So it's pretty much you all have it covered. We try. <laughs> <laughs> we try. Where did you get your passion to work with young girls? It, you know, this was my first year with the camp, um, and I really didn't think I had a passion for the camp, but they really took to me. Um, just like I said, um, most of the young ladies that participated, um, they had been there for years. So this was my first time, and I found myself, and I shared this with the girls, I found myself looking forward to those evenings, to see them. And, you know, I, could, I literally would have a couple of bad days at work, of course, and just to see their faces and just seeing like, the, how bright and intelligent they are, that brightened my day. So I don't really know where it came from. It might, I might know in a couple of years, but I really enjoyed myself with them. So what do you want the girls to get out from what you are imparting into them? I wanted to, um, my personal thing that I wanted them to get is self-esteem. Um, you don't need anybody, male, female, to justify you. You, all of, like I said, I told them, all of them, the ladies were beautiful in time, inside and out. 
Um, and I also wanted them to have, you know, be reassuring in, in, in this world to know, you know, you don't need anybody. Just believe in yourself. How important does, uh, piggybacking back on the career day, how important is education? that you all oh, push. We also had a, a lady that talked about education and scholarships and things. Um, it's very important. Um, <clears throat> even with, I have, um, I have a degree and I found when I was um, looking for a future employment, moving back to Indianapolis, I found it hard to find a job. So uh, even with a degree, it's even hard. So we definitely want to push education. Um, it's no longer a high school, degree, high school diploma is no longer just going to work great for it need to have further, for like a skill or something. I'm not, because college isn't for everyone. I will say that, but they should definitely have like a skill or something that they can um, fall back on. So where, where do you see your participation going in the future? Oh, wow. Um, well, hopefully I can continue, of course, with my duties in whatever Miss Anderson would like me to go. I'm going to just be open to that, because um, I'm not a, a great actress. Although my mother might disagree, but, um, <laughs> and I don't really, you know, but, and I'm not a good singer, so wherever she needs me. What are you good at? I'm good <laughs> at just. Tell, tell, me, tell me something you're good at. I'm very good at, at talking to people. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes, 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 and I'm listening to. I wanted, I wanted to piggyback again on something you said. You said you, you had to come back when you came back to um, Indiana, it was hard for you to find a, a job. Mm -hmm. I was just looking on the internet today and there was an article I came across why individuals are dropping out of, of school. And I think they said like tw every 26 seconds, a person drops out of school. So I, 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 I think how can you put that information to the girls to really get them to grasp that a college education is still a viable in the future going forward? I would say this, um, I would make it an option. You know, like if college is something that you're going, it's not, it's not um, are you going to college, it's what college are you going to? And I think if you instill those, especially at this age, they once they'll, they'll, that's all they know. Even though yes, they, they finished their high school diploma, but they know they have four plus, possibly plus more years to go. Mm -hmm. Just don't make it an option. Just put it in their head, you are going to college. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you also talked about fashion. I have oh, to yes. hit, hit that yes. a, little, a little bit. <laughs> How important is fashion to um, the girls? With girls, it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, fashion sometimes identifies their personality. Um, it's re even the person that doesn't want to be as fashion forward as the next, they still have their own personality and it's usually spoken through their, their, um, their dress. Um, I, I personally believe that fashion makes a person, makes you feel better. You know, when you think you look nice or when you look nice, you, you feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> she is Miss Tisa Smith, a coordinator with Visions Beauty Summer Camp. Stay with us. Ms. Valerie Miller is the interim president of Division Summer Beauty Camp. Ms. Miller, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm great. Tell me your responsibilities as the interim president. So as the interim president, um, I plan and coordinate the schedule of events along with the other staff, um, maintain and make sure um, that everything is running smoothly, make sure that we have positive interactions with our parents, um, and help recruit girls for the camp. I want to jump into because we had a conversation. He was talking about you were in this program. Yes. So tell me how you got into the program and what benefits it has done for you. So my mom had me actively involved in everything, <laughs> everything that is offered in Indianapolis. And so she heard about Vision Summer Beauty Camp. Um, reluctant, I went anyway. Um, love the like camp. Like your daughter now. Like my daughter, <laughs> exactly. And I love the camp from the start. Um, I've learned everything from interviewing, um, just how to be a lady, how to present yourself, um, how to be professional. Um, you know, to be how to take other young ladies from being that diamond in the rough and helping them shine. I think, what is a lady? I think a lady is someone who is versatile, who can chill with their friends, but can also, when it comes time to come to a boardroom, can present themselves professional and polished. So what is your vision moving forward as the interim president? 
I think my vision um, for the camp is to have satellite camps to move to other cities so that more young ladies can be touched, um, maybe even across some of the diversity lines. So how, so what do you want the kids, the young females, to take from this? Um, I want them to have memorable experiences that change their life. Um, I think one of the biggest things is the push with the father-daughter ball, the mother and daughter tea, um, getting new friends, is to impact relationships, you know, all around. So moving, moving forward, what is one, give me some success stories. Is there any one student that just stands out when you think about the program? Well, this summer we had a young lady named Alexis who um, was really withdrawn. She was not ready to be a part of the camp, so we thought. Um, when it came the time for the ball and for the fashion show, she just blossomed. Like, we look back at the pictures now, and it's like, oh, my gosh, that's her. So we were very proud of her. So with all these girls together, yes. you know where I'm going with it. Yes. So how do you deal with different emotions, different attitudes? You know those attitudes can get in the yes. way of a lot of stuff. Yes. So how do you uh, deal with that? And I know you being a former teacher like myself also, you can't spend most of your time disciplining the people. Right. So how do you get them to get in there and be excited about being in this program? We actually try just to tailor the program to their interest. Um, there's dance, there's um, acting, just different things that they like to do. We even had art one year. Um, usually when they get in those areas that they like, there's not that much drama. And we have a lot of family and team meetings. Um, talk about loving each other and what it means to love someone else and to empower the next young lady instead of tear her down. How important is it to have the parent in participation with the camp? We couldn't do the camp without the parents. Our schedule in the summer is busy, six weeks straight, events every week, sometimes twice a week. So without parents transporting their young ladies and supporting, we couldn't do it. Have you had any um, love from the community as a whole? Because I know do you get donations or we do. sponsors? Um, our girls take patron lists out and they are very well. Our ball that we have, the queen of the ball is the young lady who has raised the much, most money. And so that comes um, from the community, from churches, from schools, from teachers, from all over. So where do you see the camp growing in like five years? In five years, I will hope that we were satellite in at least three different cities, um, that we were able to have teams to send out and to service young ladies there. Um, I would also like to see an extension for some of our parents. Um, you have some parents who grew up and didn't have a camp like this, and so they have things that they need to be taught and able to keep it sustainable with their young ladies. How important do you have, what is the father participation with? Because I know when I was the keynote at the father-daughter ball, you had a lot of fathers that participated. How important is that to have that father figure in that girl's life? And I think you know how much the father and daughter relationship is so important. Um, when they see their young ladies in that white dress, it changes. We have had father and daughter relationships that were restored just from their daughter inviting them to that ball because it's an event that changes their life forever. Um, but they support 100%. So I, I, is there any other females that, other success stories that stands out in your, in your mind of a female that's doing extraordinary things? I would even say our other instructor, Ms. Katie Jackson, um, she was born right here in Indianapolis, went to Indianapolis Public School System. She is now a lawyer who has her own law firm. And so she is doing very well, very well. <laughs> so so I, I think I always want to piggyback on the educational piece. Yes. And I brought that up in the last segment, and I read a thing that was saying that every 26 seconds, an individual drops out of high school. How, how do you instill into your girls that education is a key, that it just gives you more choices when you get out into the real world? Um, every year we've had some kind of career component um, and showing our girls how having their particular career aligns to their education and where they are now. Um, this year we kind of extended that and we had guest speakers come. And so the girls were able to sit in tiny groups um, with prosecutors, uh, with police officers. So they were able to hear their stories and how education was important and it was the focus. So how does your daughter like the camp? Uh, my daughter Honestly, is daughter. my daughter. So, <laughs> like me, she's very reluctant for the camp every year. She's like, Mommy. But by the end, she's excited. Mommy, you have my dress for the ball. Mommy, do you have my fashion show? Mommy, me and my daddy are going on a date. But at first, it's always, you know, she's kind of a tomboy. So, yeah. She is Miss Valerie Miller, the interim president of Vision's Summer Beauty Camp. Miss Valerie, it's an honor to have you come, come back nice. anytime.
Ms. Valora Anderson is the founder and executive director of Vision Summer Beauty Camp. Ms. Valora, it's an honor to have you on the show. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, sir. I am just so fascinated with this program you came up specifically for, for females mm -hmm. ages 10 to 16, I believe. Mm -hmm. How did the whole vision come together? Well, I started off as a licensed cosmetologist here in Indianapolis. Um, I had my own salon, and I went through a real, real big test with that salon. You know, where <laughs> I, you know, and I was just giving this testimony at church. Um, I had been given some instructions by God to formulate um, sort of like rules and regulations for the salon, and they didn't like it. I had eight booths and two nail techs you know, stations, and they didn't like it, and everybody walked out on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was left there all by myself with all the bills to pay. Mm. While I was going through that, God was teaching me a number of things, to be patient, um, to be prayerful, to trust Him. And as I was going through, uh, as I ended that journey, God began to send girls in to the salon that was coming out of beauty school. And as they came, the, just the idea just came from nowhere. You know, I saw some little girls coming into the salon. They looked like they were a little half baked, had nail polish halfway on, halfway <laughs> off. You know, the hair was all over the head. And, and I said, you know, we need to come up with something that will assist our girls in, you know, their grooming and everything. And so, uh, out of that test that I went through at being in the salon by myself, God spoke to me and said, "Teach my girls what I've taught you." And even at that time, I was like. Okay, what, what was it I was taught, you know? What did you teach me, Lord? You know, because sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. You know, we're in the midst of that test and that trial. And so um, even as I began to come out of it, I began to see the things that God had changed inside of me. So Visions was not just about trying to clean up their outside, but also putting spiritual things inside of them, you know, that would help them persevere through dif different things in their lives. I want to talk about how you persevered when you said everybody walked out on you. Wow. Because I think some of the girls that are in your program, mm -hmm. they are going to go through those situations where yeah. friends walk out on you, on yeah. them, and that the girls at this young age, their friend, the core friends is pretty much mm -hmm. their heart, mm -hmm. uh, and they have more influence, their friends have more influence over them mm -hmm. than even their siblings. So. Uh, how did you persevere And that, that was one of the things I had to learn was to be alone. You know, uh, I found out that it's when we're alone that God gets the closest to us, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and in those times when I was alone, he would talk to me and he would give me instructions and, and he would bring up situations. And I said, oh, God, that's, I know nobody did that but you. You know, mm -hmm. those type of things. I remember one day being in the salon and I felt a brush just, uh, you know, up, up the side of me. And uh, it was just that knowledge of knowing that there was an angel, a guardian mm -hmm. angel there, you know. And with that being, uh, having that experience, I knew that everything was going to be all right. And so it was just that thing of trusting and knowing that God was going to bring me through. In fact, that was one of the greatest tests I had as an adult up to that point. And I was around 36 years old at that time. Do you ever tell the girls your story? I have not, but I tell, I do share with them um, other tests and trials that I've had as a young girl and having a preacher father. Um, I just, I don't, I should, or probably should, I just haven't told them that. <laughs> you know, I probably should. Yes. It would probably enlighten them a whole lot. But then sometimes you think girls are not even interested in what some adults are saying. And so that's why I've used the, uh, the younger women to talk to them. Mm. I, I think this your the story of perseverance and seeing how you took the the idea, mm -hmm. the vision that mm -hmm. God and being now, obedient. Now I did share it this year though. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I was in, uh, compelled to share it this year with the girls, uh, so it was it was really nice. It's good to talk about it, mm -hmm. you know. So where do you see the the camp going in the future? Well, you know, I have had people to invite me to other cities. Uh, they've wanted me to come and start visions in their city. It's just coming up with a plan, Valerie and myself coming together and drawing up a plan as to how to do that, you know, uh, being in those cities, um, also making it multicultural. 
because up to this point, <clears throat> I must admit, we've probably had one Caucasian girl come to the camp over 22 years. <laughs> so I, you know, the thing is, is to get it out there and start inviting other cultures, you know, Hispanics, Mex um, the, uh, our Caucasian sisters, you know, and bringing them in. So let's talk a little bit about your staff. Okay. How important is your staff and what type of staff do you have? I have a wonderful staff. <laughs> I do. Um, after 22 years, okay, uh, Valerie was 10 years old when she came to the camp and also we had uh, Katie Jackson who's the lawyer mm -hmm. and we've had other girls that have gone on to do great things singers uh, one girl is in New York she's uh, working with um, stage design and all like that um, we've had some wonderful girls what they do is they come back when they come back then they enlist in the camp those things that they're good at which lightens my burden and so, of course, you know, that's going to make me feel a whole lot better because <laughs> I don't have to work as hard. So yeah. as one of my girlfriends tell me, said, you work smarter, not harder. Yes, right. Yes, <laughs> yeah. right. Yes, right. Yeah. So they're a wonderful staff. They, uh, they have seen my vision, uh, and they know exactly what Miss Valor requires and what she wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is one thing, one success story that stands out of the girls that are participating right now? All of them are. I can't say one <laughs> over the other. All of them are, you know, because, you know, some struggle a little more than the others. Uh, but from from my knowledge, uh, I keep up with some of them on Facebook. They're all wonderful mothers. They all uh, enjoyed their times with visions. Uh, they, they give me so much good input, you know, as far as what visions has done for them and how they've never forget forgotten the experience. And so that's one of my uh, you know, little leads on that. It says the experience that lasts a lifetime. That's right. Mm -hmm. In like 30 seconds that I have, how can an individual get involved with Visions? We began to recruit girls at the beginning of the year in January. Now we'll send out things or either they can find us on Facebook on the Vision Summer Beauty Camp page and we will let people know, you know, when we start registration. Well, she is Ms. Valora Anderson, the founder and executive director of Vision Summer Beauty Camp. Ms. Valora, it's an honor to have you. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, I appreciate yes, it. Yes, Thank you. That's our show for this evening. And remember, you can follow us on the World Wide Web at theDerwinSmileyShow.com. And remember, my sole purpose is to inspire greatness in you. I'll see you next time.